podcast. I'm Sam. It's Thursday nights, and I'm just cleaning up freaking milk here. Before we start, Max has to have his, his coffee, and I don't know what it is. It's like a, it's like a fake cappuccino. It's espresso with milk. It doesn't come out of the expensive machine hot enough, so he's got to put it in the microwave. It doesn't come out hot enough. Well. I don't know why it always does It's because that. you pour a pound of milk in. I it. do not. And then you leave the <laughs> container here with that these I milk circles for. all over the counter. That Thank I'm you. sorry for. Thank you. And because of that, I'm going to make myself a cocktail. I was just, <laughs> and it's funny that it's funny that I'm glad I didn't just jump into uh, ripping on you for and like obsessively cleaning the countertop <laughs> while the intro was running because I was about to tell everybody that that's what you were doing while the <laughs> intro was going. I was an- being anal here. Yeah. This is what I mean all about. I just noticed this a second ago. Can you see? I don't know if you can see this, Shannon. Oh. Can you see that spot? That looks like a toothpaste spot. You know, <laughs> so I had four people over here for breakfast this morning. <laughs> what, like what people? Uh, do you remember me talking about Matt Gordon from uh, Urban Solace and I went to the East Mesa Juvenile Detention Facility mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and cooked with the boys that are there? Yeah. Well, we're going to the Claremont facility, and we're cooking for the girls that are oh. uh, in girl juvie. Oh. So the, the cop organizing people came today so we could suss it out and talk about what we're going to do. That's cool. And I was make, I made frittata. I, here's the frittata that I made. Oh, your frittata is amazing. Except here's the difference. Here's what I did. I don't know, it, so it's cold, so maybe it's not looking amazing right now. Uh, I did put chorizo in it this time. Whoa. Instead of uh, bacon. Mmm. Dang it. And I'm telling you, it's super good. It's like a Mexican frittata. Yes, exactly. Super good. Red peppers, garlic, spinach. Really good. Speaking uh, of Mexican but dishes. Wait, just let me finish this. I was beating the eggs and I flung the fork. I was late. They were coming at 9 30 and I hadn't gotten in the oven yet and it was about 9 o'clock. You got to cook it on the stove, as you might remember, and then you get it in the oven. I don't know what episode that was, but you should go watch it. You should make the frittata because it's really good. So I'm beating like a crazy fucking madman here. And I just take the fork and I fling it in here and a bit of the egg went. (laughs) And I guess I didn't notice until a little later. And then I wiped it because it's black. It seemed like it went away, but it's like this ghost thing. It just keeps coming back and coming back. That's the worst. God. I don't know. That's so funny. (laughs) <laughs> Episode 115, go frittata yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's a great shoot. It's, a, it's the perfect. Oh, and look at that with a little sour thing. cream and salsa right on top. Yeah. Um, by the way, I was thinking about this. Uh, the, the recipe that's on the website, Sam the Cooking Guy, I think is different than the way I cooked that one. What I do now is I start it on the stovetop, and I, I let the bottom uh, cook come together, the egg thing, whatever you call that. What do you call that? Cook? Harden. Harden. Sounds gross. Harden, (laughs) whatever. And then I put it into an oven about 300 degrees and let it finish in there. Because if you just try and finish it here, cook the whole thing here, the bottom is going to get too cooked, too browned up. You know when egg starts to get hard and and then goes flaky or something? Mm -hmm. Before the center gets cooked. So you almost have to finish it in an oven. Why can't you just do the whole thing in the oven? Why couldn't you just do the whole thing in the oven? Because I don't think you have to. I guess you could, Shannon. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. I like to do it this way. Maybe it's more complicated. (laughs) I need this drink, though. Max, you're going to say something. Just let me start this. So raspberries in here that we will muddle. And muddling is just that. And when I muddle, I like to use a little bit of the alcohol. This is going to be a tequila thing. So a little silver tequila in here. Mm. The liquid helps just, you know... Mush this around a little bit. Yeah, and it kind of like infuses with the raspberry. Yeah, it's all good, the raspberry right? Juice. So we've got this in here. By the way, I really like that muddler. It's a nice muddler. I was supposed to it. So we will now put ice in here. Maybe one more. Tequila. A little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. Almost finished. L- lemonade. Mm. Nice. Mm. What do you think of that, Maxie? <laughs> Looks amazing. It's good? Oh, yeah. 
All right, and that's it. We could put a little bit of lemon in there, but I don't really know if I have to. And then a spoon. Uh -oh. Put a raspberry on top for garnish. That's really good. When I made it uh, the last time, So something just happened and we crashed for a second and now we're back. You didn't really notice because through the magic of the two boys in the back, we got our shit back together. This happened once before and it went down to like 20 minutes. Therein lies the difficulty of uh, broadcasting, of streaming out live. Uh, not just streaming on the internet. I've, like I said, I've watched the Today Show and countless other live programs where they've had issues. NBC has problems with it. How are we, you know? It happens. Absolutely, it happens. So, can I show this? I want to show this. Hold on. Just let, let me give people a sense of this. This is a... Do I want to do this now? I was just going to show the rat's nest of wires, Max. Should we yeah, do that? Yeah, you can do a little tour. Why okay, not? Okay, so here, check this out. So, <laughs> so, you know this is my house, right? I live here. Kelly lives here. Zach, until he goes to school, lives here. Max uh, lives with his brother, Jordan, and... Of course, Lynn is not one of my children because <laughs> he's too tall <laughs> and he doesn't live here. Uh, but so it's a house. It wasn't built for this. I mean, it wasn't really built to be a TV studio for, the, for a cooking show, but it works fine for that. But the live cast, this is a little different. And so Shannon will show you. So we have three cameras that we use. The one that Shannon's on, uh, this one right here, number, wait, hold on. There you go. This one right here mm -hmm. that shoots the couch where Kelly normally is and she's not there today, but Jilly's there. <laughs> Jilly's, Jilly's, Jilly's behind, wait, oh, no. Jilly's behind me, there she is. <laughs> and then this, the center camera, that's the one that's on me when I'm sitting right here. So mm -hmm. we have these three cameras. And we have a fourth camera, the boys in the back have their own camera to show what's mm -hmm. going on, right? Mm -hmm. So now the three cameras are on tripods, there's lights, there's this one light up here, there's this other one here, and then behind Shannon, is another light still to light up what's going on in the kitchen. I just realized we never did, we've never done this. No, no we never have. We never showed off I like studio. The, I like, kind of like that we're doing this. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Except the wiring part for me, the wiring part for me is a little gross because we haven't quite cable managed it maybe the way that we should. But so, Shannon, you come over here. Please don't trip over anything. Oh, no. yeah. And this is the section that for some reason Steve tripped on one day and it took everything down. <laughs> we think he just yanked something out of an HDMI connector. Which you're dangerously close which to. Which I'm now. right right here. Stop, stop, stop. But so if you... <clears throat> but Shannon, if you just show what's sort of going on here. Well, let me get this chair. You know what's funny? Way. This is a lot cleaner than it used to be. <laughs> yeah. Oh! Oh, God. Oh no, what was that? Oh, that was me. That I was just I got over the camera. I got I got Shannon's Shannon's cable oh, caught up in my flip flop. Oh god. We should probably stop this <laughs> really? segment of the show. I, I don't really enjoy no, this. No, 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 here let's just finish. So here look. That's scary. So down here is where the wires all come from cameras and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they follow along here. Uh, right? I'm getting hot, dude. I need to get a drink. And then look over here. Oh, Go over there, Shannon. You got, oh, I got, I got your wire. That's the rat's nest. Look at the rat's nest. And then show the wire into the, the hole into the other room where the boys are. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. And, and then it comes, comes out. Right, right through here. It comes out right below the desk that those guys are in. Yeah. And then it's got, <laughs> it's got all their shit in. Yeah. All right. So, look. So when something... <laughs> It takes a dump. It's because there's a there's a lot of pieces here. This is not the Today Show where it still happens. Mm -hmm. We can't be expected to be like them. If it happens to them, it can happen to us. If they could make a mistake about a co-host and get rid of Ann Curry after a year and then change it up and put Savannah Guthrie in there and not admit a mistake, what well, does that mean? You guys can get rid of me because it's been a year. <laughs> oh, if this is not working. <laughs> oh, I could hop in that chair. Right. No, everybody would hate me. I have this thing in my hand that we're not going to talk about tonight. Because we're actually, technically, now after this whole speech about being live, <laughs> God, we're actually away. <laughs> but rather than just uh, run a repeat, we wanted to run fun stuff, so that's what we're doing. But I want this to be talked about when we're back and when you can really communicate with us, all right? 
We're going to a wedding in Vancouver. Today's our Tuesday. It's Thursday for you guys. We've been in Vancouver for a day and a half now. Is and that, Whistler. That... We've been to Whistler, too. No, no, no. Oh, by We go point. to Whistler Friday morning, which is, for the people watching, is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. For us, is in two days. Yeah, maybe we could, um, <laughs> maybe prior, maybe before we get in, what? I'm just laughing how complicated. Like, this is like a time machine. This is like right. Back to the Future. I know. Um, I was going to say, maybe we could talk a little, before we get into our cooking, or live cast stuff, maybe we could talk a little bit about what kind of food we're going to be eating up there. Because we already have a plan for Thursday morning, I know. Yes, so Thursday morning, uh, Max, Jordan, Zach, and me, not with Kelly, because she doesn't really give a shit about it, uh, and she'll want to be with her sisters, we're going to go for dim sum yeah. in the homeland. The Hong Coover homeland. Right, which you'd think that dim sum's homeland would be China someplace. It's not for us. It's Vancouver. Mm. Amazing Chinese food there. Thursday night, the, the boys will be going to... Uh, Kelly's family's restaurant, Kobe Japanese Steakhouse. Oh, yeah. A cook at the table, Benihana, but way better than Benihana type restaurant. Maybe we could show the promo video that you and Steve made for Kobe when you were up there. Oh, where is Kobe? Should to, we yeah. do that? We'll do that. Wait, what's See this website? It's like Kobe Restaurant.com. Uh, you have to be careful. If you Google right, we'll Kobe Vancouver, Lynn, mm -hmm. you'll find it. It's on there. Yes, <clears> it's great. That's what I did. Um,. You guys will be eating there Thursday night. I will be going to a place called Joey's. So mom can have some stupid lobster grilled cheese. I used to work there. You used to work at Joey's? Yeah. How was the uh, lobster grilled cheese? Very good. Yeah. Mm. You got to talk Joey to, to pull the mic. You got to talk yeah. into the mic, sister. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's delicious. Very rich, but. Yeah, and so we're going to a fucking good. lobster grilled cheese place just for that and not going to Kobe. I'm trying to get out of that, by the way, Max, and come to Kobe. Kobe's so, much, would, much better. Kobe's much, much better. I have no desire to go there. Oh, hell yeah. It is. Awesome. doesn't matter. And then Friday morning, we go up to Whistler, and I don't know what we'll be eating up there. It'll be wedding festivities. Check it out. Look at this. Steve and I went up there. Steve shot this. Oh, this is awesome. This I is would love to shoot there. Steve-esque, actually. I, it's so yeah. Steve-esque. Steve's amazing, man. Yeah. Yeah, Steve's yeah. great. As much crap as we I, give him no, here. I, oh, I, did you see the hostess, the I, cocktail? These are girls that work there. Oh, my God. I totally use Kobe Steve has the prettiest. The prettiest. Uh, cocktail waitresses you've ever seen. Yep, that's our Uncle Bry. That's why you like it so much. <laughs> that's why we love it so that's much. That's our Uncle Bry. Look at it. That's it. That's nice. That's a good that was yeah, my that's idea. That's amazing. I can't remember what that says. It says something cool in Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> that was my work. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. So. All right. Uh, but uh, Too Hot to Cook week continues. It's last night. And tonight, here's what we're doing. Have you had a lobster? Who's had a lobster roll? I, I love lobster rolls. I have yet to have a good oh, lobster roll. Oh, mom is here. Kelly's so here. Look who's uh, here. I, we're not making lobster rolls. We're making crab rolls. Oh. Which I think are within their grasp of everyday people. Lobster rolls require, obviously, lobster that you just can't get easily mm -mm. for this. You can buy crab that's already ready to just be mixed in. Lobster, you're not buying lobster cooked and shredded and red, you know. Unless you're up like in that. New England. Mm. I had a lobster roll in Cape Cod. Oh, yeah, jeez, really good. I want to know if there's anybody out there that is in New England right now and eating lobster. Oh, wouldn't place, that be nice to know? There's a place here in San Diego called The Taste of Boston. Yeah, they like twice a week they'll bring in fresh lobster and they have their lobster rolls. Like literally, you have to and they do lobster place. rolls right there. Oh, really? somebody tell me where it is. Taste of Boston. It's like Poway, I think. R Poway. It's closed. Poway. It's is it's it? closed. Oh yeah. well, apparently. Oh no, I haven't been there in a while. God, <laughs> oh, Shannon, no. you're the was only really, one. It really, good. It was. It's in Mira Mesa. It's where I live. Yeah. Mira yeah. Mesa. No, there's one in Poway. Mm. Poway. I I can't find it yet. A bite of Boston. Bite of Boston, maybe. Oh, okay. taste, that one. Uh, that one is taste of Boston. No, taste of Boston closed. Bite of Boston's open. It's in Poway. That's Let's go. Bite of Boston. Let's go. I'm All right. Interested. So anyway, so tonight we're doing lobster rolls, and don't forget what we crab made rolls. last night. Uh, crab rolls. Sorry. Crab rolls, and don't forget what we made last night before uh, it ended that had to be in the freezer for a good, you know, 12 hours. Oh, I forgot. was the mango uh, Malibu rum lime sorbet ice thing. Nice. Hell that we're yeah. going to have tonight that is so delicious. Mm -hmm. So delicious. So. And could not be more perfect for too hot to cook week. Of mm -hmm. course. So today... Uh, uh, Zach comes home from work. 
He's 18. He's working for the summer before he goes to college. He's, good. he's a good boy. And he says, we're riding bikes from a restaurant in Del Mar, the Brig, where they love to go to eat. It was just, they've just redone it. It's opened up. And it's Tuesday, and they have Taco Tuesday, and apparently they're awesome there. Mm-hmm. I've not had them. Brig's a great place, but I don't think I've been for Taco Tuesday. No, but okay, we've got to explain what Taco Tuesday is to people outside of Southern California. Go ahead, because you've been to the Brig for it. Yeah, well, okay, Taco Tuesday is a thing that a lot of um, Mexican restaurants and almost a lot of other restaurants do every Tuesday in uh, Southern California, and it's basically, you know, they have good deals on tacos. Right. For a dollar, two dollars, and, you know, good drinks and happy hour stuff, and... It's really fun, and you can it, go with your friends. And, and what, what's time. the thing to get at the Brig? Is it a shrimp taco? The Brig, or a, or no, the fish? Brig is famous for their fish tacos. Fish it's tacos. just like a deep-fried fish taco, kind of like from Rubio's. Got it. Um, which we had the other day. Which, the by the way, it actually was amazing. We had, we did have Rubio's the other day. It was so good. And it is a damn good fish taco. Oh, yeah. Have you had one lately? Yeah, I love Rubio's. I love Rubio's. And I got that one with uh, avocado and Yeah, like corn. a like Holy a kicked-up version. It was so good. I kind of like the old-school one. You know what I was impressed with? The size of the piece of fish that was in it, first yes. I looked at it and I go, wow. They have not like hit the wall and started putting in a little tiny yeah. baby finger piece of fish. <laughs> this was a really nice piece of fish. Um, crispy, light, delicious. If you haven't had a fish taco, I remember years ago, Max, when you were one. Mm-hmm. Kelly. Upstairs. Mom. Kel. Do you remember when when come all the here, family man. came come down? Here. Come in here. Do you remember when all the family came down, and we did um, the Mexico trip, all the Zions and stuff? Yeah. How old was Max? Oh my God. Uh, three. No, 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 no. Kel, he was like in a backpack when we went to Tijuana. I don't even remember. Oh, Tijuana. Eighteen Tijuana. months. Kelly, can you drop down? Eighteen months. <laughs> Max, tell her to drop she down. Wants to see he wants to see your face. Go down, Kelly. There you go. Nine months. Okay, he was nine months or something. He was in a backpack when we went to uh, Mexico, to TJ. <laughs> anyway, okay. my brothers came down from, from Vancouver. Uh, they were staying somewhere in Coronado. And I said, I'm bringing lunch. They were at the pool. Mm-hmm. I showed up with 12 Rubio's fish tacos. <laughs> and they go, great, we're starving. What is it? And I go, fish tacos. And they both went like this. You kidding? <laughs> I go, what's the matter? They go, how gross sounding is that? What? I go, it's only gross until you eat it. Because I think for this some people, 20? fish taco doesn't, uh, doesn't sound very good. But don't forget, this was 23 years ago, Max. Okay, we've got somebody we can ask right now. Who? My girlfriend, Jilly, sitting on the couch there. I introduced her to fish tacos pretty recently. It was maybe like uh, four or five months ago, Jilly. And? It was like a year ago. It was like a year and ago, but it's her favorite. Four or five months a year. It's all the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> and? Um, yeah, I love them. They're amazing. But and it's not something that you really get in Canada. No, and when he Edmonton. said, and when he said you're going to have a fish taco, were you like, gross? I w- no, not gross, but I definitely wouldn't have ordered it if. if uh, yeah, if I somebody had recommended, hadn't done that. I recommended it. I said, you guys will love fish tacos. Get them. And then it's, it was just, yep. Yeah. See, I don't know if you can get a good fish taco outside of. Uh, I mean, you can make your own with Southern fish California. sticks like we do. You can, which is delicious, mm-hmm. but not exactly what you would get at a, you know, like a place like that. Anyway, there's a reason for this. Why was I talking about fish tacos? <laughs> Mexico trip. Tacos? Me in a, me in a backpack. <laughs> I don't know. You went to Rubio's. <laughs> <laughs> this is our show. <laughs> oh, Zach. I'm yeah. the bike. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, God. So Zach goes oh, to far away from Zach that. goes to the brig for Taco Tuesday tonight, and then he and four friends are riding their bikes up the coast to Cardiff to watch the sunset, and then they're going to another friend's house. So Zach comes home today. He goes, "Come on, let's get the bike. Help me pump it up. Pump up the tires. Blah blah blah. Okay, we go outside. He goes to get the bike, which is at the front door." He comes and he goes, the bike's not there. I go, oh, because I mo- you left it against the bushes today. Too obvious to see from the street. Somebody would steal it. I moved it up against the side of the house where nobody can see it from the street. He goes, oh, okay. He goes back, he comes in, he goes, there's no bike there. I go, it's right there against the side of the house. <laughs> he comes back, he goes, there's no bike there. I'm not stupid. I go and I look. There's no bike there. The fucking bike is stolen. Oh, no. Assholes. You should have left it in the bushes. Do you know 
No, not in the bushes. You could. It was really obvious no, then. I know. Do you know how that, that feels? Uh, it's terrible. I want to say violated, and I, I know that for people that have been actually violated. personally, physically yeah. violated, it's not even close. I'm just saying the idea that somebody had the fucking nuts to come up to the front door yeah. and steal the bike pissed me off so much. When I had that crackhead break into my car, I just, it felt gross knowing that some disgusting person was climbing around my car trying to grab things and shit, right. you know? I talked about the story about when my car in Vancouver was broken into the first time and the guy cut himself and there was gloves and blood <laughs> on top of my car and stuff. I felt violated and i know that's not the right term for people that have been violated but i didn't know what else to say i felt awful i went on facebook and i wrote dear piece of shit who stole our bike today nice move really nice 171 people have liked that oh yeah and once again the liking thing is is questionable there should be like <laughs> a dislike button. i mean no i mean the, uh, whatever. we understand right. we understand <laughs> right and you live in a good neighborhood 76 <laughs> comments right yeah, and we live there in the There you go. Exactly. Cheryl Giese, two hours ago, wrote, dislike. We need a dislike option. <laughs> That's horrible. People have written all kinds of things, including people saying, hey, uh, too bad. You should have locked it. How do they know I didn't lock it? Yeah. I didn't say I didn't lock it. Why point. would they assume I didn't lock it? I didn't lock it. <laughs> <laughs> And I know that I know that that I should have locked it, but I shouldn't have to lock it. I and I don't give a shit that it's 2012 and not 1959, by the way, when I was born. <laughs> it's not 1959 again. I don't care about that. It shouldn't happen. Amen, dude. Preach Thank it. you. It's really annoying. But here's what's more annoying. Zach called me. I had to run to the store to get uh, get our dry. I had to run to get our dry cleaning before they closed. Because when we shot this, they'd be. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Zach's wait. Zach moves heaven and earth to borrow a bike from up the street because he can't find a bike, and we pump up the tires and get it ready and clean it. And that's a single gear. And he was bummed about that because there were some hills involved, and he didn't want to have a fixed gear bike. Whatever. You could have borrowed our bike. Well, thank you. We didn't know. <laughs> so he calls me and he goes, guess what? And I go, what? He goes, Stefan already came over and picked up our bike. What? I go, oh, no. Are you telling me the bike's not stolen? Oh, no. <laughs> Shut up. He goes, no, the bike's what? not stolen. The oh, bike wasn't no. stolen. Oh, what? <laughs> After all my ranting. Oh, all no. my ranting. <laughs> oh, my God. And all the shit that people said online. Stephen. Thank you for your support. That's a good thing. But bikes still shouldn't be stolen. <laughs> but Whether you know, it's mine or anybody else's. I hate the fact that people steal crap. But in this case, they didn't. It just felt like it was stolen. Uh, I saw somebody on there write something about karma, and it's true. If you go and just steal someone's bike, you'll get, you'll get it back. Not you know what I want? I, like, you'll receive. I, I imagine that at some point, when, when, if you believe in heaven, uh, that you'll go there. And if you're good in life, you'll get a good room. I want a good room in heaven. With I nice say deal. this I want the Four Seasons version of heaven. <laughs> I don't want Motel 6. And Motel 6 is fine, but I don't want it for eternity. <laughs> I want Four Seasons for eternity. <laughs> I want 1,000 thread count sheets. <laughs> Egyptian cotton. Egyptian cotton. <laughs> I want that foam, that, that what do they call it? Mattress. Tempur the the <laughs> Tempur-Pedic that your hands go in and it holds the shape and then it comes out. I want billowy white cotton curtains that with being blown in from the air off the, o the ocean or the lake, whatever's they've got in heaven. And then every Saturday night, if I want... I can go to the stadium and watch the people that were fucking pieces of shit <laughs> in life do awful things like break rocks and have to jog uphill, really steep uphill with bad, bad, loose running shoes on. <laughs> so that's you, how it works. You have a very, very skewed view. <laughs> that's what I want. Nice view of and all the terrible food that I've had to eat in my life, that's all they get. 
There's nothing good. There's no light, fresh salads and fruit and, and perfectly cooked fillets. There's none of that. It's well done, really crappy cuts of meat that they would give to horses. That's what those people get. Walk uphill with running, bad running shoes. <laughs> Come on. They have to wear those fluorescent ones that uh, you almost bought. Please. That's God. So People are so great. The, the comments people have said are, it's awesome. You know, I think you're at the point in your Facebook career that you can ask any question that's slightly controversial and just. That's the stuff. I write like this. Oh, I had a nice grilled cheese with a whatever today. And people are like, ah, nice. And people are like, F you, I hate grilled cheese. 20 likes. No, I get like 20 likes. Yeah. But I do something like this. Like the Gordon Ramsay thing. Yeah. Last night. Well. Last night, I'm flipping channels. Last well, last night for uh, for me, okay, which was Monday night. I know you're watching. It's Thursday, so imagine <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm flipping channels, and I come across Master Chef that I don't like. I don't like the show, but I I stop on it, and I don't know why. Just I'm watching for a couple minutes. And the premise of the show is this. They start with uh, 50 whatever regular people, and they call them down. Each week, somebody goes, a couple somebody's go. And there's Gordon Ramsay and a guy named Joe Bastianich and another larger guy with white glasses that are weird. And, <laughs> and I don't know why. He, he's a restaurant guy. I don't know who he is. Chicago guy. I know Chicago that. guy. Is yeah. that what he is? Yeah, I forgot what his name was. A resident foodie tells us that. Mm -hmm. He's big, though. And so every week, however many people are still there, they have to make something, and they, they take it up. Do you remember that scene in Oliver? The very beginning, by the way, I love Oliver. I haven't seen Oliver. You've never seen Oliver? I haven't seen it either, man. Who is it? Uh, can you explain? Mark Lester. Yes. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a musical. Oh, okay. It's about a, uh, a, a um, orphan boy in, I don't know, whatever, the early turn of the century in London. He has, he has no family. Uh, he lives in a poor, in a workhouse where kids that didn't have uh, parents were sent and they worked and they got gruel to eat. And, mm -hmm. and he, please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> you don't know that line? No, uh, you know that line. I didn't yeah. know that was from Oliver. It was from Oliver, right? I thought that was from, um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, no, it's, it's from Oliver. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Mm. Not one flew over the cuckoo's No, place. it's from Oliver. Yeah, but, yeah. The, but the point in the movie when, the, when Oliver, and in, in the film, the, kid, the, the actor was Mark Lester, he has to make this long walk up with his bowl, empty bowl. And he, please, sir, can I have some more? And he's little and they're big. So these contestants have to take whatever. It's uh, pasta day and they have to take their pasta dish up and they put it in front of Gordon Ramsay and Joe Bastianich and the dude with the white glasses. And they come up one at a time and they do this. They taste the food. When are you going to change... The sad way that you've been cooking. <laughs> this is awful. Have you ever cooked pasta before? Have you? It's horrifying. And then he goes back. And then the Gordon Ramsay comes up. He goes, oh, spits it out. I wouldn't fucking give this to my dog. It's bloody awful. Anyway, it's that kind of, I just, anyway. So there I am last night. I'm flipping the channels. I come across it. I watch for a few seconds. It's fish night. Some guy brings this thing up to Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay, the first guy takes, gets to Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay goes like this. Look, this show is master chef. It's not master bait. <laughs> I went, are you kidding me? How long has he been waiting to say wow. that stupid line? Probably so a I go very on, long time. I go on Facebook and I say, just heard Gordon Ramsay say, it's master chef, not master bait. How long has he been waiting to say that? He's such an effing tool. I actually had... He's such a fucking tool down, but I thought that's too harsh it's for Facebook. Harsh. I took it off. Look at that. 368, 368 likes. Unbelievable. It's freaking awesome. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 365. Or social these media. Normal people like you. These, aren't these are normal people chefs. like me. These are not chefs. But it doesn't matter. The thing that bothered me, and people, look at people have said all kinds of stuff. They have agreed with me. People have said this, Adrian Moore, he's got a toolbox full of Michelin stars. 13, actually. How many do you have? Oh, Did I say anything about his, his culinary ability? No. Nothing. I thought this was funny. Zena Lavovsky just hit dislike 
I didn't even know that was an option. Was it? <laughs> or did she just write dislike? She just wrote dislike. She wrote dislike. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Milligan writes, I dislike Zena's dislike of your comment. <laughs> I thought that was funny. And then this guy, Matthew Gan Gagnon, says, Love you, Sam, but Gordon is the man. You may think he's a tool, but he is to cooking popularity as Tiger Woods is to golf. Jordan was to basketball. Jobs was to smart everything. Obama is to uselessness. Well, that's not even funny. Jeez. Gordon is bigger than the game. Here's all I have to say. I wasn't attacking his credibility. He's a successful chef. He's got a lot of restaurants. He's got a lot of TV shows. That has nothing to do with it. The comment was a tool comment. That's what I was saying. I, and by the way, for Matthew Gagnon, who said this, and I went and I private messaged him this because I didn't know how to get to him any other way. You private messaged some guy? <laughs> yes. I said, yeah. by the way, this is the guy that said, you know, Tiger Woods is the golf. Uh, Jobs was smart. Blah, blah, blah. I said, by the way, what has Tiger Woods won in the last couple of years? One tournament just a couple weeks ago. That's it. And by the way, Steve Jobs is dead. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't usually like to disagree with you, but Tiger is leading the PGA Tour right now. Okay, for the first time in how long? <laughs> I'm just saying, dude, the guy's still really good. No, the guy's but just no, starting to get really good what, again. What I'm gonna, what it I'm doesn't say matter. Is, and by the way, the guy was a piece of shit in his personal life who went and banged a bunch of women, women when he had a wife at home. <laughs> He's a terrible person inside. He may be a great athlete. All I'm saying about, about Gordon Ramsay is that was an effing tool comment. That's what it was. And I agree with you because you, Tiger Woods is also a tool and so was Jordan. But I love Jordan. It's, I'm not I saying anything Woods, about any of these Gordon guys' Ramsey. technical it's, ability exactly. at we're, whatever it is they we're do. We're on the same page. Man. I'm just saying the guy's a tool, and that was a stupid thing to say. You need to be a little bit of a tool to be like at the top of your industry. Do you think? Like that. You know, I don't know. I don't yeah. think you have to. I think it just Look that just this. comes with the territory. I think about those people that he mentioned: Tiger, Michael Jordan, and Steve Jobs, all known to be huge dickhead assholes who were very obviously into themselves you know so maybe you need a little bit of that narcissism to be that successful speaking speaking of tools <laughs> and i like the idea look we tried to do uh what what uh restaurant owners hate about the public here one night and it didn't mm -hmm. work matt was here and paul was here right yeah it just didn't really fly they weren't prepared to sit here and say that customers are shitheads or tools or compl whatever so I want to turn it around one day and we're going to have some servers here. <laughs> okay. But I heard a comment about a chef the other day. I'm not going to say who the chef was. I'll tell you guys after. But this guy worked in his kitchen. He worked on the line. <laughs> and here's what he said this guy did one night. He said it was, there was a, there was a, Three or four of them on the line. I don't remember what it was. And I don't remember what order they were making the food and the appetizers and the hot entrees and the vegetables and the desserts. But the guy that was in charge of, I think it was a dessert I don't really know, that had peaches involved. You make a dish in a restaurant, and in many restaurant setups, there's that little window that you put your shit up on when it's done. Mm -hmm. And in many restaurants, the executive chef doesn't actually cook all the time on the line. He, he does what's called expediting. So the, the dish goes up and he takes it and he takes the towel and he wipes around it and he might put the last little couple of micro celery leaves on it or whatever. He makes sure it's fine and then it goes to the, the servers and they take it. So in this restaurant, the, execu the, the executive chef who's working the expediting position takes this peach dish off of the shelf, the pass, and as he pulls it down, one of the peaches that's perched perfectly up on its edge falls down. Mm. It was his fault. I mean, it wasn't a big deal. So he just picked it up and he righted it, right? But as he writes it, he sees and he feels it's not as ripe a peach slice as he wants it to be. So he looks at the guy who just put it up there and he goes like this. Where do these peaches come from? And the guy goes, uh, they're in the, uh, the drawer. He goes, no. Where did these peaches come from? Now everybody back there gets quiet, right? He goes, they're just in there. He goes, did you see where they came from? He goes, they just came on the delivery this morning. He goes, did you pick the peaches and put them in your box? Let me see the box of peaches. So the peaches that this poor kid, who's now probably shaking over, hands them to the executive chef. 
And the executive chef starts going through and feeling the peaches. And they're not ripe where he wants them to be. So he picks them up and he goes, you don't give a fuck about my customers, do you? He goes, no, I do. He goes, you don't give a fuck. And he throws the peach at the guy. Oh. Boom. Oh. Picks up another one. He starts yelling at him, berating him for not caring about the food that goes out, the customers in the restaurant, his reputation, peach, boom, bam, peach, boom, bam, hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. He throws one. It hits a stainless steel refrigerator behind him. It dents it. Jeez. The guy that's telling me the story is two people down from the guy getting peaches thrown at him. Mm -hmm. And apparently he said something to quasi defend the guy who's getting beat up with peaches. <laughs> and the chef goes like this. What'd you say? And the guy's like, nothing. He goes, no, what did you fucking say? And he repeats it. The chef takes the peach. He throws it at him. He hits him here. He busts his glasses. Oh. And then he says, get the fuck out of my restaurant. Go home. What? The guy goes home. The chef calls him the next day. What's the chef do? Sorry? Nope. Fires him. <laughs> he what? fires him because he spoke back. The chef could not let anybody think that he could be spoke back to in his restaurant. I have to make an example of you. You're gone. Jeez. So you're supposed to take a beating and not say a word? Yeah, apparently. Yeah, like a Timex watch. Take a beating and come up ticking or whatever that expression is. That the point is, chef is chief in French, right? Is Wait. it? I didn't know that. I think it means chief. Okay. Lynn? That's why I'm named chief. Chief? <laughs> is, it, is that right? I have no idea, but that sounds But I think, I think it means chief in a restaurant. Let's get some Google Translate up in but this. But the point is... Uh, they are who they are, and a lot of them are uh, are like that. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. What's I'm not one? calling Gordon Ramsay anything other than a tool for that one comment. <laughs> it is, is a chief, local by restaurant? the way. It's a, lo it's a local restaurant. Oh, wow. Chef I've, is chief, by the way. There you go. Chef is chief. You know, I've heard that story so many times, like that type of story. That where, type of story. Where chefs just lose it, and... It seems to be like the accepted thing nowadays. And then I, I've worked with a couple of chefs who they complain about the opposite, like how guys that work under them just don't have any respect anymore and they just feel a sense of entitlement. And I don't know if that's a problem either. <laughs> Look, I, like, I, I don't own a restaurant. But if I did, of course it would be my name that was out there. And of course, you know, look, we, you, Max, uh, we talked about me being anal about, anal about wiping the counter tonight. Uh -huh. I think if I had a restaurant, I'd be anal about the way the food went out. I started doing my, my own cooking classes, taking them under my own umbrella, because when I would do them at a cooking store way back in the beginning, they would give me one assistance, and then everybody else helping with the class was a volunteer. Uh, I would do a cooking class at a cookware store. There'd be one person that would be like my right-hand person. And then I would make like a whatever. I'd make a big salmon filet, whatever. And I would hand it to these volunteers who if they did five classes, they'd get one for free, right? Yeah. And they're civilians by day. They're, they're receptionists and they're you know, accountants and they're bus drivers and they're school superintendents, whatever that are into cooking and they want to be part of the thing. So they volunteer their services at five cooking classes and they get to come to one for free. So they, they come, I make a whole salmon filet, I hand it to them and then they take the salmon filet and they cut it and they plate it and they serve it. They put the sauce on it or the cilantro or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. I remember the time, the last class I did, as I was watching my salmon going out to the crowd and there was big pieces and small pieces and too much sauce and no sauce and not enough of the cilantro or green onion or whatever it was. Finally, I said, you know what? I want to control this myself. So I'm going to hire my own people. I'm going to do my own classes, not here at my own choice of my place of choosing. I want to make sure that when somebody comes to a Sam the Cooking Guy class, whatever their expectations are about me, about my food, about the environment, about the whole thing, I exceed them. It was that simple. 
I know how they feel in restaurants. By the way, I have a cooking class coming up August 17th at Great at uh, Great News. Wow. Summer Eats. There it is. Great news. That was like the I know first that was place. the place. That was the place that made me say I got to start doing my own classes. That's so. Go funny. back. Fixtures living. Yep. Sponsor fixtures of the show. Living, fixtures baby. living. Look at that. Here's the thing. Cucumber mojito, cherry bourbon lemonade. Love it. Mm. Grilled terry mayo scallops. One of my favorite things I've ever done. Pastrami Reuben dogs. Gazpacho and grilled shrimp. The five spice chicken thing that I was talking about the other night. I'm doing it on rice. Mm -hmm. Smoky sweet. I've got too many food things in there. That's a lot. <laughs> And the know. hot rum peaches. Oh my look god! At, okay, wait. Look at this, Dad. You have scallops, hot dogs, shrimp, chicken, ribs. Yeah, that's a lot of. Food. That's summer eats. I don't know what else you would call that. Anyway, that class is it. Uh, is at Fixtures Living. Sponsor this show, August seventeenth. You can go to my site, thecookingguy.com, to the classes section. Mm -hmm. Kelly's making herself a cocktail. <laughs> the classes section. Click on that and buy it right there. Yep. You can also go to fixturesliving.com. Check out how cool they are. Kitchen, bath, outdoor. They have all manner of amazing thing there. If you were thinking of building a kitchen, if you were dreaming about building a kitchen, it's a store of dreams. It's where you should go. Kitchens, bath, outdoor stuff is the stuff that you have to see. I'll be there on July 27th. They're doing a San Diego blood drive. Go there, give blood, come inside. It's a Friday. Have some lunch with us. Hang out. Won't cost you anything except some blood. There you go. How's that sound? Which you grow back anyways. Which you grow back anyways. That's true. Why not give it away? In fact, you got too much blood. Get rid of a <laughs> pint of it. And go to their two. Facebook page and like them. Fixtures Living on Facebook. Right. Thank you, guys. All right. So here's what I have to do. I have to make crab rolls. I got to do the mango ice thing. We ready to go cook? We are ready. Oh, we didn't even talk about Taco Bell. Right. We'll save it for next time. All right. All right. Let's go. <laughs> What's going on there, sister? Did you tell everybody about how you've been making... Did you tell everyone about how you've been making her cocktails wrong for 22 yeah. years? Yeah, let me do this. Here, watch this. So I got it. I got it. So, so Kelly and I at night often like little vodka cranberry thing, right? So we've been married 26 years. 26 or 27? 26. Been married 26 years. And it hasn't been every night for 26 years, but for many of the years, I will make the cocktails. Kelly likes vodka, splash of cran, and lemon. I put lemon in. Like a month ago. She's got lime in her cocktail because I wasn't home. I come home, she's already made it. She's got lime in it. And I'm like, lime? <laughs> Don't we have any lemon? She goes, uh, I like lime. I go, what? She goes, I like lime in it. I go, you mean I've been making these things wrong all these years? <laughs> she goes, no, I'll take it, but I like it. I've been making them wrong. Change it up. And by the way, do you see what I just did? Check this out. Here's an important point. I've talked about this before. It begs repeating. It's worth repeating. Many restaurants do this. They make a cocktail and they take the piece of citrus, lemon, lime, orange, doesn't matter what it is, and they go like that. That's useless. Such a waste. That's doing nothing. What you want to do is you want to do this. You want to take the piece of citrus and squeeze it in. You're not getting anything by dropping it in. I think they do that because some people might not want it in there, so they give them the choice of squeezing it No, in. here's the deal, Shannon. Hey, watch. Do you mind my fingers? No. We've been married a long time, right? Here's the deal. They, if they just drop it in and the person wants it squeezed in, Shannon, here's what they have to do. They now have to take their fingers. Look at me. Digging, digging to get that piece that wasn't squeezed. Is that nice? Is that nice for a customer? No. Gross. It's not. Here's the deal. If it's a cocktail that has a piece of citrus as the main part of the cocktail, it should be squeezed and dropped in. You shouldn't put something on a plate at a restaurant, and Lynn will back me up on this. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't put something on the plate at a restaurant if it doesn't belong with what's going on there. How many times have you been to a restaurant, thank you, and had uh, like a lunch, and there's an orange wedge sitting there? It has nothing to do with anything. 
They put it there because they're trying to make it look pretty or yeah. dress up the plate. That No, that doesn't make sense. And anything that's on a plate should be edible. And oftentimes, they put stupid green shit there that doesn't belong. I'm getting mad. Oh, I don't, don't want to get mad. All right, here's what we're making. We're making uh, crab rolls that are going to be really good. So here's the crab we're using. We've talked about this before. This is pasteurized. We've where's used it before, too. We have. So, so, where's, the, where's the words that say that? I think that? with crab dip. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. You don't, I mean, look, you can go to the store and you can buy crab like this. Well, not like this. You can buy crab that comes in a can like tuna fish. You know what I'm saying? We know what that is, right? Looks yeah. Looks like one of these things. Of course. Here, right? Here's tuna. Crab. It would just say crab. A and it sits there on the shelf, and I'm telling you, it's NG. Check it out. Episode 149, Cheesy Crabby Beery Oniony Dip. Oh, God, that was good. That was so good. That was really good. Okay, but you don't, you don't. Look at this crab. That's crab. That is not what you're getting wow. out of. That is not what you're getting out of that uh, metal tin. This is pasteurized and it's refrigerated. That's the important part, right? So here's what you do. And they always put the really beautiful pieces up on top that I like. Watch. I'll show you how this comes. About how much is one of those things? Uh, in dollars? Yeah. Oh, wow. This is eight ounces, so half a pound. I think these were six bucks. Wow, that seems like a really good deal. I think it's a good deal, right? But there's a little, but and see, the bigger, beautiful pieces are up on top. Mm, I love that. But here's the deal. There's a little extra moisture in here that I don't want, so I do this. I don't know. I don't know. I think anybody tells you you have to do that. Lynn, you ever bought one of these things? Yeah. Have you done this? I usually drain it. But see, I think just putting it in the thing is not enough. Look at that. It's beautiful. Do you remember what we did with this one night? Apart from that, did we not also make a crab benedict? Oh, we did. I'll try and find that picture. Right, look at this beautiful crab meat. Okay, so this for me is really like the easiest way to do this. I mean, it's not that all, it's not all that attractive, but I think it's, look how gorgeous that crab is. Oh, we did crab wontons as well. Oh my God, we did. So I don't buy crab in a tin. I buy this kind of crab. Well, actually, if you went to like Costco, Costco has crab from that place in is it Baltimore, I can't remember the name of it. It's a really popular crab place. They have restaurants. Right there are the episode 76 crab wontons. So go to the samlivecast.com and check out the episode. Okay, so watch what we're putting in this. So, so far it's just crab, right? Mm -hmm. Crab rolls are going to be so good tonight. Mm -hmm. I have to make a decision about mayonnaise. And I have two types. I have Western mayonnaise and I have Japanese mayonnaise. Japanese. I think I have to do it. But I also think I have to get a new, a new one. Oh, there's one right there. So here's what we've got. We've got this. Brand new mayonnaise. Let me take this off. I don't know what show or how many shows we've talked about this. I'm not going to talk about that. That was like way back in the early One, days. Two. We found we would uh, have people go to Amazon to look and see how much it costs. Right. Mm. Okay, next. Crab. Green onion. And I've got some pieces of green onion in here from earlier. This might be enough. Really, I think green onion, is, it's a vegetable, right? Yes. yes. Just making sure. <laughs> I think it's probably one of my favorite things ever. 
I can't imagine not having green onion to put on stuff. We know you love green onion. Oh, yes. I know. On Shannon would would bu- bug me mercilessly really? on the show when we were shooting. <laughs> Sam, the cooking guy. Put a green on everything. Well, I think it looks nice. And this is what I do. I take and I cut lengthwise. So when I then go, hold on. When I then do this, it's already getting to be smaller, right? I don't like big chunks. I like small pieces in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too big a chunk can throw off like the balance of a bite. Absolutely. So this is going to be enough, but I just want to make sure that it's cut small. Okay, only two other things are going in this. What? Can you guess what they are? Um, well, the mayo. Chili. Mayo's already in. Um. Chili sauce? Nope. Watch. Shit, I don't know. What's That's on a high. lobster roll? A lobster roll. Onion? I just put onion in, dude. Oh, oh yeah, green onion. I was thinking regular onion. Oh yeah, no. I want. You don't want to double up the onion in this. Lime. Close, Shannon. Lemon. Ooh. Just a little bit of lemon. Not a lot. You don't want to make it too watery, but you want just a little bit of that. If I was on the Food Network, I would say you'd want to brighten it up a little bit. Because <laughs> that's what they say. I don't even know what that means. Brighten it up. Uh, I'm going to put a little Old Bay seasoning in. One of my favorite things. And this is a w- East Coast crab, lobster-ish kind of thing that is so delicious that Well, that is so delicious, that dumb thing. That raspberry thing with the tequila, mm-hmm. that's delicious. So now, here's all I have to do. You're not trying to make, I mean, I'm not trying to make this so that it's so wet with mayonnaise that you could, it would, I mean, it uh, looks like egg salad. Mm-hmm. I like that it still has its crab shape. I don't need to add salt because the Old Bay has a, a salt component to it. Wow. How's it smell? Do you have any idea how good this is going to be? You know what that tastes like? Crab. Wow. A little bit more of this. It's so quiet in here. <laughs> You're <laughs> letting me get mesmerized. away with it. You know what? Can I say this? Sometimes just letting the show breathe mm-hmm. and there not being a lot of talking is not necessarily a bad thing. No. I'm just, we're all mesmerized. Okay, well, wait till you have this. Now, the cool thing. I'm coming. The cool thing about a lobster roll, or in this case, a crab roll, is what it's served on. And it's served on a hot dog bun. When we went to Boston years ago, Bruno, my good friend, Zach, my youngest, and Noah, his middle one, um, we stopped and had lobster rolls in some, you know, New England some place. And they were delicious and they came on hot dogs, hot dog buns. And I said, I've only heard of this. I've never actually had one of these. And he had, because he's from that part of the world, but it was delicious. And what's cool about it is you've got lobster, one of the most expensive things on one hand, and a hot dog bun, one of the cheapest things on the other hand. Yeah. The, the comparison is fantastic. 
Okay, so you put a little butter on here. We're gonna warm this up. This is not a hot, obviously. So this is gonna go here. We need a piece of lettuce. So we're using this bib that I busted into. Oh no, this is brand new bib? Kelly. We grow our own lettuce in the back. We do, but right now we're going here. Because this is in front of me. I like these living bibs. We got better stuff in the garden, actually. Should I not use this? No. If you want to get it for me, no, but. Go. Well, thanks a lot. But I didn't. Here's what I like. Come right down here. Watch this. Where do you see this thing? Oh my gee. That means, oh my goodness. And I've got one thing up here. Hold on. What's this for? Anybody know? Uh, the, uh, the slushy. Yeah, no, the, yes. But we don't want to call it a slushy. <laughs> it's slushy ass. I'm eating lobster over here, dude. Don't be calling my thing a slushy. Okay, almost there. 30 more seconds. I'm not trying to brown this thing. I'm just trying to give it a little color and a little heat and a little texture on the inside. What do you call it? You call it not toast. Hot dog roll? Heated bread? I Heated you, bread? You call it, you have a special thing that you call it. I do? Yeah, not toast, but it's like heated bread or something. I don't know. What you talking about, Never Willis? mind. Never mind. What is it? I have no idea. He's saying, Girl what do I? Bread? There no. we go. Almost, almost, no, no, no. almost, almost. I don't want, I wouldn't put, see, here's the deal. This weight I use when I want to grill things on here. Grilled cheese and sandwiches and blah blah stuff like that. I, I don't want to, I don't want to lose the shape of the bun too much. It will flatten it to nothing if I use that. Somebody count to ten. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Great, thank you. Four, three, two, one. Okay, watch one. this. Watch this. Watch this. I don't really know how to do this. I'm gonna do one here. I just need a little one. Oh. Look how perfect that is. Look at this. Wow. Seriously. I'm telling you, you saw how easy this was. This might be the best part of it's too hot to cook week. I don't think there's enough for pictures, Lynn. I'm sorry. Uh-oh. And so you got to do this. And then look how gorgeous. Mm-hmm. The bun's warm. This is cool. That's cool. One bite. One huge bite. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Here's what you should taste. Crab. Mm. That's pretty much it. There's no overwhelming mayonnaise. A little tiny bit of the, uh, the old bay seasoning which is a really good thing that you should have if you don't. But this is about warm bun and crab. That's where you're going. That's what this is. It's so good. All right, but wait. Don't stop there. Let me do this thing. So last night, here's what we did. In a blender, we took mango, Three mangoes, the flesh of three mangoes, a cup of water, two tablespoons of sugar, juice of three limes, and uh, three tablespoons, like a quarter cup of Malibu rum, which is the white bottle that's coconut uh, infused rum, right? You want that for this. I blended it, and I put it in this pan, and this is how it came out. Wow. Right? Totally frozen, staying inside. So what are we gonna do with that? We're gonna take one more bite of the crab roll. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Mm. Because we can. So now we're gonna do this. We're gonna take this, and the way to get it off just a scrape, look. Oh, 
I don't like that. Really? Oh my god. But look at it. Look at this. Look how light it is. You know what this is? This is nothing. If you were to eat this, there's so nothing in this. There's mango. There's a little sugar. There's two, like two tablespoons of sugar in this whole thing. There's three tablespoons of rum. But check out how amazingly beautiful it is. If you wanted, you could put a little lime zest on top for a little color like this. Watch, quick, before it melts because it's so light. That's it. There you go. Look at that, Shannon. Mm. <clears throat> I just burped inside. Did anybody hear that? No. Sorry. I'm trying not to be gross, but I'm, I'm eating. <laughs> Look how pretty that is. Look at that. And here's the bite. You want to talk about light? That's a dessert. This is a dessert I can get behind. Because I don't like chocolate. Coconut, mango, rum, light rum, lime. That's it. That's all I'm getting. It's amazing. This week's been good. The food's been good this week. The noodles. What was the other thing we made? What did we make last um, night? Bread. The salad. The salad was the noodles. That was Monday night, right? With, yes. the, uh, with the with the Asian garlic bread, what was last night? That was last night was the salad and garlic bread. No, last night was no Max. Last night was the salad with the avocado and the cucumber and the uh, watermelon. Yes, that's what I said. The salad and the garlic bread. You we didn't make the things. garlic bread last night. Oh okay. <laughs> Monday. Sorry. All right, it's been a fun week. We're gonna see you next week. Be good. Don't eat bad food. It's a simple rule. Don't eat bad food. We'll see you here again. Thank you for hanging with us. Peace out.